When you make a game using a game engine, you really want to give it a feel that it's your game. It's unique to you and it's different from other games made using the same game engine. And that's why a handler pipeline is very important. It's important that you can choose between uh, pipelines, customize a pipeline as you want and I'm aware of that and in my game engine I'd like to support that uh, sometime in the future but for now I really made the foundations that are going to be necessary to in order to make this a thing in the future so that's all about it in this video I'd like to show you what I did and why that's a big thing of course for now it's not like a lot of stuff but I will show you this in practice and I'm gonna show you a little bit of a backstage on how I implement this in C++ just in case you are also making your own game engine and you're curious about how this is done okay so to exemplify this the simple thing to do here is I'm, I'm here with a scene a, ba a very basic scene I do have like my objects and if I go to the properties I can edit, edit my material and I do have here like an UV um, an albedo texture here I don't have anything else just an albedo texture that is this one here and it's apply it again to my mesh component in this cube and the, the thing here is that I can change of course, I can change uh, in my settings what I'm doing uh, when it comes to post-processing. I can disable the shadows. I can uh, change the screen space blur. I can change the shadow intensity, the ambient occlusion. So we can see here the ambient occlusion in action here. And I can do a lot of a lot of adjusting. I can disable the hay marching, for example, to make it a little bit lightweight. But I can also now change the entire handler. I'm never going to be able to pronounce this uh, properly, but I can change the handler. So right now I'm using a PBR handler, which is the default handler of the game engine, but I can click here and change to a basic one. A basic handler is just a basic handler. Uh, I'm, I'm basically grabbing the albedo texture and handling it. There's no shadow, anything else. It's not a huge deal. It's not a huge thing, but uh, it's now possible to do this and if I save the project if and if I close the engine and open it again you're gonna be loaded uh, using this handler and why that's uh, that's important well in the future first of all I'm going to be able to create like different handlers, like a PlayStation 1 handler. This is almost what I was thinking when I started writing, writing this basic handler, uh, but a cartoon handler. And you'll be able to change between the handler in a single click, which is amazing. And Unity does have, Unity is like that game engine that is very popular out there uh, do have a handler pipeline stuff with like the universal handler pipeline the high definition handler pipeline but the problem with that is that uh, there's no compatibility between each other so if you create a material for a handler the material will not going to work in other handlers this is not the same thing here because the material are the same so you no long you're not going to have to like change the settings of your materials he apply the textures or do anything crazy you can basically create a material so let me open my material here so here is my material in the properties i can create my materials it's going to work let me disable the um, the color, I'm gonna select a different color and this is gonna work as well in my materials. I'm not sure if the color is working. Let me change it. Let me test it. Basic handler, here we go. It's working just fine. And if I go ahead in my material and select the uh, texture, it's gonna work as well. If I change back to the PBR handler, uh, the, the texture is gonna be applied as well. So the material is the same interface no matter the handler you are using. What you're gonna change, of course, is the handler settings because I'm ha I have here a shadow uh, configuration, but I do not have a shadow configuration in the basic handler because there's no shadows here. I, I haven't implemented this. But the question here and the, the cool thing here is that I'm gonna be able to create different handlers as I need and, and as I want to. And you, in the future, not now, it's not available yet, but in the future, you, you're gonna be able to do the same as well. And I'm gonna show you in a second how this works behind the scenes, again, if you just in case you 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 are into game engine development but first of all i need to give you a little bit of a spoiler here uh about why i'm doing this uh first of all the pbr handler is like a deferred uh handler it's kind of complex the way it works you can see here i do have like hay marching which is super expensive 
and they're gonna cost a lot in some machines. I do have shadows and a bunch of other stuff. I have a bunch of passes, a bunch of high resolution textures. And if you have like a simpler uh, computer, or a computer with a simple GPU or no GPU at all, you're gonna struggle to run the engine and run a game. And this is not what I want. So I really want to create a very basic handler. That's why I have like the basic handler as well. Again, but I, I still want to give to all the, the options, for example, the PBR stuff, the shadow stuff in the basic handler. I just want to get right off like the deferred stuff, the hay marching and so on. Because again, if you have like a, a cheap computer, you're going to be able to run this with no problems. And there's a, this is another, there's another thing that I'm considering, which is an Android port of the game engine. So I'm considering exporting the game engine to uh, Android because for now, if I go ahead here in the standalone player, uh, there's an export as runtime option, but it's for Windows and 64 bits only. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm considering exporting this to Android as well. Of course, I do have like the Linux and the Mac that I'm, I'm considering as well. Uh, it's a little bit harder because I need to link the libraries. Uh, in the case of the Mac, I do need to have a Mac. I don't have a Mac right now, but Android is a little bit simpler. I do have a phone here. I can test things out and uh, I'm already in a way to export this to Android. But again, Android is, is not like a supercomputer. This is very, very, very cheap. This is very, uh, low budget, even like a modern phone, it, it's nothing compared to a uh, dedicated GPU. So if I want to add like Android support, I do have to implement a simple handler as well. So that's why this is handy, because if you, you, you're going to be able to select like an, an Android uh, optimized handler and you're going to work just fine. Okay, so that's why I'm implementing this. Uh, it, it's taken a while because this is like a design decision. This is like how I'm going to create the handler is a design decision. I need to figure out if this is an asset or not. Uh, I have plans to make this an asset. So it, you're going to be able to create an asset from here and apply it as a handler because again in the future I, I'd like to allow you as the user of the game engine to create your own handler this is that may be very good very cool as well so that's the that's what I'm working right now and I'd like again to show you a little bit of like behind the scenes of how this is implemented okay so again I do have the different handlers here and the way I did this in the code is to completely separate the handling part, pipeline handling, uh, into an interface that I'm calling, let me close this and open the code. I don't want to save uh, a handler. This is basically an interface. Let me open this. So this is my interface for handling. And again, this is behind the scenes. This is my code uh, that the game engine uses. There's a bunch of like internal stuff here that the engine uses uh, for the resolution of the handler, the aspect ratio to get the, the handler image and so on. And when I want to create a different handler, because the engine is only using, only knows about the handler, which is an interface, uh, I do need to implement this handler. So this is a, the basic handler, and I'm implementing the handler. This is like C++ code. You're not gonna be able, you're not gonna have to worry if you are the end user, the, the user of the game engine. You're not gonna worry about this. This is like behind the scenes again, for you that uh, are making your own game engine and you want some ideas. And I basically need to overwrite these three uh, functions right here, which is the handler all, that is the function who does the magic, and the get position and get normal. Um, the get position and get normal is basically like uh, the engine needs to know, for example, when you click in the screen, when you when you click to select an object or to like place an object in a specific uh, place in the scene, it needs to know. Uh, the position of your click or something like that. And it also needs to know the normal. That's why you do have this two, uh, this two methods here to get the position and the normal. And again, if the handler uh, is custom to you, uh, you 
you're gonna have to implement that as you want of course you can use like uh, physics the physics engine to do this behind the scenes you're gonna be super uh, super uh, expensive but again you can if you want to but you need to provide those implementations uh, you're gonna see in a second that this is like a single line of code uh, because of the way I'm doing it but you need this the handler again is how you handle the stuff and those three methods here are from the asset because the handler is, a, is also an asset so let me open this again it's an asset here I'm implementing the asset in the handler so I need uh, I have like a save a load and a draw UI uh, method here uh, it's optional there's a default implementation to it but uh, and, and you can see there you're gonna be nothing here implemented but again I need to implement those three methods so going a little bit further here let me show you what is the uh, this thing about so this is the basic handler again in action. I have nothing here in the save, load and draw UI implementation. Uh, it's empty. I can add stuff if I want to. And again, the get position and get normal. I'm basically only uh, grabbing my frame buffer, my final frame buffer uh, and reading the pixels here. This is just that very simple and for the normal as well I'm reading the pixels uh, this is a different texture of course I just need to pass like the coordinate and the texture to read the pixel uh, for it this is a, because I'm basically outputting three different textures here the final textures which is the uh, index zero and then I'm passing like the normal texture and the position texture of course I can reduce this to only one texture for the position and normal but again I'm keeping this simple just to implement things out but I do have to provide this implementation and take a look at my handler it's super simple I'm just using the final frame buffer well, which is basically this uh, I need to call this function instead because sometimes the final is not this final there's a placebo um, handler and stuff like that I'm setting the viewport here this is basically a dire, almost a direct call to an OpenGL method but it's encapsulated here uh, just in case I want to support like DirectX or Vulkan some time in the future so I, I have this all encapsulated uh, I'm setting the viewport I'm clear, clearing the buffers to like a black color with an alpha channel and that's it and now I'm drawing everything so I do have a handler graph a handler graph is basically uh, a container uh, that stores the description of the scene that you you are seeing okay so there is nothing there is no like logic inside the handler graph there is no uh, physics nothing this is uh, built before handling and it's it, it gonna contain for example the transforms the uh, materials the meshes and so on in order to handle everything and it's optimized as well so I do have like a draw that it basically draw the entire handler graph which is this one uh, from this view here and in this case I'm passing my camera that's important because I may want to handle everything from the Sun position to, to generate the shadows this is important that's why I do have a view here so I'm drawing my handler graph from this view passing a basic shader okay this is uh, I'm creating this shader right here so it's a shader program with a vertex shader and a fragment shader so I'm basically handling everything and this is everything that I need uh, in order to have a basic handler working of course in my PBR handler which is the default of game of the game engine it's way more complicated but again I can do this and the engine doesn't need to know about that it's super simple now to add different handlers so for example now in the PBR I do have like a struct here with a bunch of configurations that you guys saw in the in the viewport in the editor let me open this again let me open my project and I do have here in the settings like the post processing stuff uh, the general stuff is basically the, the resolution but I do have like a bunch of post processing configuration those configurations here are this struct right here so I have a config with a bunch of options here that you can select I'm saving and loading this configuration using those methods here and I have a fancy draw UI stuff to make this uh, beautiful okay I have the implementation for that is again and the implementation to handle all and I do have here in a private um, part of my class a bunch of stuff that I'm using to handle uh, everything so I have like a bunch of uh, functions here to make my life easier and again if you see the implementation part of this it's gonna be huge so where's the handle all that is the main stuff and I'm calling a bunch of methods here a bunch of 
private methods that does the handling, all the handling, super complicated handling for me, okay? So again, I can extend this. This is the whole point that I'm showing you in this video. I, I can extend this as I want. And for example, uh, how hard it will be to add like uh, Python scripting for you as the user to create your all handler? Well, super simple. I'm probably gonna have to include the Uniday engine here. And for example, in the basic handler, let me add this. Let me add this to allow custom logic here. I need to have a handle. So let me create an asset handle. Oops. For a Python script. And let me add script. This is a handle to an asset, of course, that you have like in the game engine, and this is a, the type of the asset. So very simple here. And in the basic handler, in the implementation of this handler all, let's say that I want that I don't want this. I want the user to do everything. So let me comment out this code, and I grab my script. So auto s equals to script dot get. Again, this is a handle that I created, and if the user passes a valid handler. I will basically do script s dot run script. This is everything that I need to do in order to add like Python scripting to my game engine to the basic handler. Okay, and if I want to to display the script in the UI in the draw UI, I just need to do script dot draw UI script. Just that. Okay, let me actually run this. So you guys are going to be able to see just the, the script working here, just the draw UI. Let me compile this and run. All right. So if I if I launch the game now, take a look at that. Um, if I select my go to settings and go back to the basic handler, I do have now a script uh, field here. There is nothing and there's no script in the scene. So let me create a script here. Let me go ahead in my asset browser, right click new asset Python script. It's here, the Python script. I can change the name of this, can change everything. Let me actually rename this to handler uh, just because yes. And let me double click here to open this in the text, ed text editor. This is like, uh, there's a component uh, code by default, but for example, let me change this to print hello world. Okay, so I'm just printing this in the in the script. And if I select this script here, there's a handler. Let me open the terminal here. There is nothing here in the terminal, but if I select the script, let me do this real quick. I'll select the handler. See, it's printing the hello world every time it handles because again, I'm running this script. So the the only thing that I needed to do here is to, again, comment out this code here that I was doing before and let the user define, let the user write this part inside the script and it's gonna work just fine. So this is how simple it will be uh, for me to add like custom uh, scripting. O of course, uh, there's a lot of stuff, corner cases that I need to test. That's why I'm not shipping this right now. Uh, don't worry, wait a second. <laughs> I'm not shipping this as well, but I, I just like to, I just wanted to show you guys how simple it will be, okay? So, uh, and again, I can see you go back to the PBR shader and I have everything here. Uh, there's no way to save this stuff at this moment, so we need to conf adjust the settings again. But again, that, that's amazing, that's very simple to do and very uh, cool. Uh, it's not a huge deal to have Python scripting here as well. There's no Python scripting in the PBR handler, by the way, but there, it's not a huge deal because all the methods that are gonna be calling, for example, the handler graph.draw, which is a super, um, expensive stuff to do using Python, uh, I'm not gonna actually use Python to do this because it's a C++ compiled stuff, okay? That's why it's not a huge deal. So that's it for this video. I that I kind of wanted to show you guys this. Um, the engine is growing, it's evolving a little bit slow, but it's going there. And if you wanna support me, uh, consider enjoying my Discord server. I also have a Patreon, so if you wanna support this project, I'm gonna leave the link in the description so you can join the Patreon, okay? So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it, and I see you in the next time.